Hello and welcome to my channel 7 Scales, where I recreate sci-fi spaceships and build World War II ship models. In this video, I want to share the project I've been working on for the past 5 months. It's the 12144 scale Starship Milano from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, there it is. Get my ship. It's the Milano, the orange and blue one over in the corner. They crumpled my pants up and it will fall. That's rude. They folded yours. Anyway, I think this build turned out pretty great. I can say this is the best model I've built so far. So before I begin, I really want to say thanks for all the comments and feedback on the Valkyrie shuttle video. I read all of the comments and they really inspired me to take on more difficult projects like this one. And about the files, I decided to create a shop section on my blog where I will be putting all the 3D printable models I make in the future. So if you make a purchase, I want to thank you for supporting this channel. And now let's get back to the video. The Milano is a fictional alien starship from Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's one of many variations of the M-Class ships used by the Ravagers. The exact dimension of this ship wasn't very clearly stated, so I scaled it using Chris Pratt's height against a reference frame. According to my model, this ship have a wingspan of 48 meters, length around 22 meters. So it's around the same size as a B-2 bomber. Just make it a pretty good 1 to 1 for 4 scale model. The wingspan is around 30 centimeters. Even though this ship crashed later on and it was replaced by another M-Class spaceship, I still find the Milano the most interesting one and the one of the coolest ship in the whole MCU. I just really like how it feels so agile and it looks very enjoyable to fly. This is the second 3D printed model kit I designed myself. I did gain plenty of experience from designing the first one, but this is still very challenging for me. As you can see, the layout of this ship is pretty unusual, making it a lot harder to model when compared to the more traditional looking Valkyrie shuttle. Overall, I think I spent at least 400 hours from start to finish on this project. I should mention this is not a movie accurate model, because the reference I had was very limited. I think I made up 80% of the surface details like panel lines and vents. these two projects, I have learned that designing a model kit is a lot more than just be able to model the exterior. I really felt I have spent just as much time on those hidden interior structures as I did on those exterior details. And it feels really good to see the stuff you designed yourself fits together really nicely. So initially I thought the design of this ship was inspired by an eagle. However, when I was making the 3D model, I find the top part look a lot like a stingray. I don't know if this was the original intention, but I just thought it was really interesting how combining features of a fish with a bird created something very alien, yet it's still very familiar to our eyes. This model have around 25 distinct components and each of those components is made up of multiple 3D objects. I think as an individual designing a model with 30 components is probably the maximum I could do in a reasonable amount of time. 
Because the surface of this ship needs to be really smooth, unlike the Valkyrie model, the surface needs to be better prepared. The biggest problem with 3D printer models is the layer lines. To get rid of them, my idea was that I first sand down the surface as much as I could without damaging the details. Then I spray a layer of primer and sand the primer until I can see the resins again. Here's a picture of a test paint on a failed print where I didn't sand the surface. As you can see, it looks really bad. Because I sprayed the primer a layer at the time, the paint is more grainy looking. I knew I was gonna sand it again, so this is okay. The only reason I'm not spraying from the can is because the can had a really bad nozzle. In retrospective, I should have spent more time here sanding, so the surface will look even more metallic. This is a USB-C port I salvaged from somewhere. I thought it's nice to use a connection instead of letting the wires out. You should be really careful when drilling into 3D printed resins. They tend to crack really easily. Using a rotary tool to slowly grind away the material is probably the best way. When working with 3D printed resins, I find epoxy glue is very useful. They are a lot stronger than super glue and they aren't as brittle. The surface is gonna be a dark silver color, so I paint the whole model black using a semi gloss paint. It also helps me to see what the surface looks like after sanding. After painting everything black, I started working on the cockpit. There's a lot of details in there, so masking is a bit tricky. The apricot color you see here is the Craftsman resin from Anycubic. I think I'll be using this as my main resin from now. It produces a very smooth surface. Just make sure you don't get a gray color, because a lot of people including myself had some trouble with it. The seat belts I printed here is just 0.1 millimeters thick, and I think they look almost as good as photo edge parts. When spraying the floor, my airbrush gave me a lot of trouble. It just kept clogging for some reason. Not good. I tried to use some Mr. Leveling Thinner to scrub away the paint a bit. It did get rid of some of the graininess and clumps. I use panel liner here to add more shading. The floor is then repainted with silver again. It's actually looking better than I expected. I should mention these Vallejo metal color paints are very easy to hand paint with. I really recommend them if you need to paint anything metal color. This is 
is the first time I use these chrome markers. It actually works really well. I made the orange paint a bit too thin here, but with a few extra layers it turned out pretty good. I used the chrome markers again to recreate those shiny metallic surfaces. I don't think regular paints could have done the job. Glad I was able to turn that pretty terrible airbrush accident around. I was really happy with the result. It looks really nicely weathered. For the guardians, I use this scene as a reference. As you can see, they are very tiny but still large enough to see their facial features. Cutting them off from the supports was a bit of a challenge. A slight bend could just cause their finger to snap off. I also had to make Groot 20% larger, otherwise it would be just impossible to see his features at all. I reused a rigged marine from my previous project as a template. It was a low poly model so I can't use it straight away. I must attempt to sculpt some body features for each of the guardians. Rigging can be pretty difficult for many people, myself included, so I spend a lot of time here to get the poses right. Yes, I used that human marine template for everyone. I'm not too experienced with sculpting in Blender, but using some reference pictures I was able to get some resemblance, and I felt it was good enough for 1 to 144 scale. In all my scale modeling history, I have always been the type that leaves the pilot figure in the sprue. I watched a lot of tutorials on figure painting. But it turns out for this scale, all you need is some steady hands and use the correct colors.
painting process for the ship is nothing too special, and thankfully, my airbrush did not clog this time. The chrome color turned out really nicely. I did not use metallic color for the blue and the orange because they look too sparkly to me. But the regular paints make it look like a plastic toy. I missed some footage here. What I did was I sprayed a very thin layer of metallic silver on top. I also used some sandpaper to create some scraping effects. Just remember to let the paint fully cure before you do this. For the markings, I created some stencils, just like I did with the Valkyrie shuttle. The most important thing when creating a 3D printed stencil is to make the edge as sharp as possible, while keeping the stencil itself nice and rigid. If you make the stencil too thin, it will bend or curl up during the curing process. And if you don't sharpen the edges around letters, the result won't be as sharp. Masking tape is a lot more reliable than a stencil, so use it whenever possible. Another tip is to always test your stencils on something else first. So you might be wondering how I recreate those clear canopy glass. I also put a lot of thought into this and this is what I came up with a mini vac former. The mold is also 3D printed, but the biggest problem is again the layer lines. They will appear on the plastic if you don't sand them down. The plastic I use here is rigid PVC, 0.2 mm thick. Using a heat gun at 250 degrees, you can see the plastic softens and it works really well. You could 3D print clear parts, but because of layer lines and yellowing, it won't be as good as PVC plastic. This is a very time-consuming process, especially if you want the panels to fit perfectly. It took me 8 hours to complete all the panels. If you are buying the STL files, I will be making a few more options so you can choose to do this or just print everything out. I used super glue here to secure the panels in place, but you should use epoxy glue for this kind of thing, like I did in a later build. This is because super glue is really brittle when it's cured, which makes the panel very fragile and pops out easily.
The LED setup is incredibly simple. Everything is powered by a 5V USB cable, which connects to this mini breadboard. And I can just insert these pins, which attaches to a resistor and some parallel LEDs. Most of these tiny LEDs are from a company called FunTrying. They're pretty expensive, but they are of good quality. You can connect up to 5 of these LEDs with just a single resistor. But if you do this, you should always limit the total current to the maximum current of a single LED to prevent overload if one or more LEDs fail. The cockpit has the most concentrated number of LEDs. I'll be honest, I did not make any plans for the wires. So the final result was a lot more messy than I expected. I also added a few drops of epoxy glue on these LEDs and then painted the whole thing black, but I forgot to record it. The dashboard is greatly simplified. I think I could have added more details here. you can see what I mean by not planning with the wires. By the way, these LEDs are a lot brighter than what it looks like on the video. It's because I'm shooting with really low ISO. Other than the cockpit, the most difficult thing is probably the repulsor discs. As you can see, the solder points on these strips are extremely small. To be honest, I didn't really know what to expect when I started this project. I knew I could make a model, but there was so much uncertainty with the LEDs. But seeing the result, I really think I outdone myself on this one. I really would like to hear more feedback from you guys as well. So please leave a comment and I'll do my best to deliver more awesome scale models in the future. I want to say thanks for making it this far into the video and enjoy the rest and see you next time.
deep inside of me Girl, you just done realize what you do to me <laughs> When you hold me in your heart so tight You let me know everything's alright ah, I'm hooked on the feet I was originally planning to post this video last week, but nothing like a good old fashioned drop to the floor. There was no way for me to fix it without leaving a lot of cracks on the outside. So I decided to recreate the entire exterior. On the bright side, I got my second chance to do a lot of things better this time. I did a lot more sanding this time around and I made sure the canopy window is a lot more cleaner. I'm pretty happy it turned out to be a better model than the first one. So yeah, just a friendly reminder to handle your models carefully. <laughs> 